I think I just accidentally figured out what character we're doing going forward, who the Schmitz are, and what the end credits line means, just because of a single line from FNAF 2. So bear with me on this. Now, as every FNAF theorist is apparently required to point out, this theory is kind of insane. And you're probably gonna hate it. So, get out your pitchforks and proof, your receipts and reasons, and light me up. Go ahead and light me up. But I think I'm right on this. To start with, we need to lay out the evidence, which means that we are going to be discussing a lot of spoilers for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. So, if you have not seen it yet, somehow, and you don't want it spoiled, then stop watching right now, go open up Peacock, watch the movie all the way through to the end of the credits, then come back. Now, that being said, let's talk about this theory. We all remember that in the movie, it's made extremely clear that Mike Schmidt is not Michael Afton as we understand him to be in the game's timeline. As a matter of fact, he seems to have a number of parallels with Charlie Emily from the Silver Eyes trilogy. Both have dead brothers killed by William Afton, both have mysteriously absent father figures, both have aunts with very similar names, and so on. You probably remember that, that during Steve Raglan's first appearance, he reads Mike's name, then gets caught off guard. People seem confused by that, but to me it's always been pretty obvious. If you'd been business partners with someone back in the 80s, and then suddenly their kid showed up asking for your help in a job search, yeah, you'd probably be pretty thrown off by that, wouldn't you? Yes, I'm saying that Mike's an Emily, but maybe not quite as cut and dry as I made it sound before. Garrett. Mike's younger brother was seemingly an early victim, considering that William isn't wearing the spring pony suit, it's not inside the pizzeria, and to our knowledge, Garrett never got stuffed into an animatronic. Hey, editing pitch here, just thought of something. Oh, it's just a dream, he might not remember that the man in the car had rabbit ears. Bullcrap. Spring Bonnie's ears are massive. If you saw someone driving away, those ears would be the only thing you recognized. Or at least you would see Spring Bonnie later and be like, Wait, the rabbit ears were real? I thought it was something I just made up. Anyway, sorry about this. There's gonna be at least one more of these. Anyway, back to your re regularly scheduled programming. You know what that reminds me of? William killing Charlie, his very first victim, outside Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, before using either of his signatures. Beyond that, why would William drive all the way out to Nebraska just to kill one kid? Well, same reason he drove to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and killed a random kid there. Petty revenge gone nuclear. It's me. That's Golden Freddy's line. We all know that's Golden Freddy's line. But is it Golden Freddy's line? Obviously, that's who the line has been mainly associated with. At first, we believed it was the spirit of Golden Freddy, whoever they were, yelling at their killer, I'm still here! I am the one you should not have killed! It's me! As we realized that Golden Freddy was possessed by the crying child, that line took on a whole new meaning. It wasn't someone yelling at their killer, it was a scared small child reaching out to his older brother. So why is it in the movie? Blonde boy, is not possessed by someone Mike knew. He does not look like William, nor does he look like totally unnamed but totally Henry, father. So this obviously isn't a case of, but then they thought it was you. So what's left? We've already knocked out both of the ordinary candidates for this line, so it must just be a mystery for the next movie, right? Wrong. In the lead up to the movie, we all kind of thought Garrett would be a crying child standing. Right host, my favorite FNAF tuber, actually once said that they suspected this movie would be completely standalone, except that it would confirm Garrett as the canon name for the crying child. Much as I love their stuff, that was obviously not right. Garrett isn't Evan, nor is he quite Sammy. Garrett isn't a one-for-one -one stand in with anyone, just as Mike isn't a one-for-one -one stand in for either Charlie or Mike Lafton. But I hear you. You want to know how Garrett is Golden Freddy. I just said he's not a one-for-one -one with Evan, which means that he didn't die in The Bite of 83 at the hands of Fredbear. So, how is he Golden Freddy? Simple. He's not. Do you remember Take Cake to the Children? It's one of the FNAF 2 death minigames, so if not, he'd be forgiven. It was... Jesus Christ, over nine years ago? 
kill all of them. Anyway, you'd be forgiven, it was from a while ago, and it was from the worst game in the series, Don't At Me. In it, you play as Freddy, who is trying to give cupcakes to screaming children as William Afton drives up and murders someone out in the rain right before we get a puppet jump scare. Alright, that one may not have had Garrett, but I'm sure you remember Security Puppet, right? Uh, you play as the puppet who is tasked with saving one scared girl out in the rain. But then you fail, and William Afton shows up and kills her. Later that night, he would get home and find out that his son ran off to that place again. And in the game's true ending, we learn who that girl was. Charlotte Emily, who later possessed the puppet. Okay, that was a really easy one. Everyone knows Security Puppet. How about the FNAF 2 cutscenes? Once again, for all the reasons previously listed, uh, it totally makes sense if you don't remember them. So just to give a quick overview, you take the POV of Freddy, seemingly just now being possessed, as Bonnie and Chica look at you, until ultimately looking away when in the final one, the puppet looks at you. Alright, you've probably gotten the picture. You've opened up that box. You've seen all the pieces put together. But I know that a lot of you watching my channel are just assholes who are going to try and make fun of me later. I don't understand why you do this, but asshole's gonna asshole. I know that y'all don't tend to be all that intelligent. So I am going to spell this out for you. Well, I would, but I know that the people in my audience who actually have brain cells are probably asking a few questions right now. Namely, uh, so how does this relate back to It's Me and Golden Freddy? Well, that's elementary, my dear theorist. It's Me does not equal Golden Freddy. In my overview of the FNAF 2 cutscenes, there's one crucial detail I left out. At the end of the second night cutscene, which is while the puppet is just about to appear, there's some text at the top of the screen. It's me. That line may have originated with Golden Freddy, and we might now associate it with Golden Freddy, but Golden Freddy's not the only character it connects to. Also, as has vexed every single FNAF theorist since it was revealed, if you get three clown posters following Danger Keep Out in Help Wanted, you'll see the whole room go black light, and the text, it's me, will appear. And does this color scheme remind you of anything? That's right, black light chica. No, obviously this is the puppet. Black, blue, white, and a tiny hint of red. Hi, me again. I swear this is the last time. Something I fully just forgot to mention the first time is that clowns and puppets, specifically this clown and this puppet, tend to have a lot of connections. The reason the music box works is that the puppet is basically a jack-in-the-box. And what are jack-in-the-boxes typically? Clowns. Plus, this clown is clearly supposed to represent Circus Baby, aka Elizabeth. Afton's only daughter, and the puppet is Charlie, Henry's only daughter, at least in the game's timeline. So in case you still can't tell, Garrett is the puppet. Let's go over this. Throughout the late 70s and early 80s, William Afton and Henry Emily, while living in Hurricane, Nebraska, ran a business together. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. What animatronics they had exactly doesn't really matter, as so long as one of them was a jack-in-the-box puppet. William had two kids, a daughter named Vanessa, his oldest, and a son named Evan, his youngest. But due to their rocky family life, Vanessa was cruel to Evan, and on July 23rd, 1983, she was forced to attend Evan's birthday party, where to play a cruel joke on him, she put his head in the mouth of one of the animatronics, of whom she knew he was very afraid. But her cruel joke went horribly, horribly wrong when the animatronic's mouth clamped shut, putting Evan into a coma. After that happened, William went to a bar known as Junior's and drank himself silly before remembering something. That was Henry's animatronic. Henry designed almost all of the animatronics, and so it was Henry's fault that his son was dead. William got in his car, driving all the way out to Henry's campsite, where he was on vacation with his family. At first, he only intended to chew the man out, but 
once he was there, he spotted Henry's youngest son, Garrett, all alone. Seizing an opportunity, he prepared his knight to kill Garrett then and there, but he had a better idea. Henry had designed almost all of the animatronics, but there was one who had always been just Williams, the puppet. So, donning the puppet mask he kept in his car, William lured Garrett away, intending to murder him once they got to Freddy's. And, because Garrett believed the puppet itself to have killed him, he went on to possess that very animatronic. Years went by, as five more children were killed, and in 2000, a new security guard was hired. Garrett's older brother, Mike Schmidt. Garrett tried to reach out to him, but there was very little he could do. So all he did was write in one of the mirrors, It's me. Then as every other person he could have spoken to left, Garrett said one more phrase. Come find me. Now, I get that got a little fanfic in places, but like, most of it is still supported by the games, the books, or just by simple narrative logic. The Schmitz seemed to be on a camping trip, so it wouldn't make much sense for them to have all gone all the way out to another state just for that. No, we don't necessarily know that the puppet was in the original crowd, and we know that in the games they weren't, but who cares? Scott has done weirder shit than this in the past. <coughs> Robot children! The same applies to both William having created the puppet and Henry having created all the others, with the added benefit that it matches up with how we understand it to be in the games. William created Spring Bonnie, while Henry created almost all the others. As William said, Symmetry, my friend. And as for Evan being in the movies, why not? Like, we know that William had three kids in the games. I'm almost certain I remember that he had more than one kid in the books. So why shouldn't he have two kids in the movies? Honestly, it would probably make a little more sense. So, I hope you've enjoyed, and until next time, always remember, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Oh, I've always wanted to say that.